Before we hear from Austin about the importance and impact of being in a creative community, I wanted to personally invite you to be part of our new community. We have this exciting new space where church leaders, staff members, and Christian creatives like you can connect, learn, and grow. We're talking about a community that understands your passion for ministry, knows the challenges that come with it, and supports you every step of the way. I found it exhausting to keep up with all the Facebook groups I've joined over the years, most of which aren't very active, even with thousands of members. That's where Church Circle comes in. You can be part of 27 Facebook groups or one Church Circle. We launch on April 8th and I can't wait for you to join. Just click the link in the description to join us and find out more about Church Circle. Now, back to the episode. Welcome back to the Church Circle podcast. This is episode five of the podcast that celebrates church creatives. And we are halfway through the season already, um, which I feel like I need a a, a sound effect there with some sad noises because although we've had such a good time, we've only got five episodes left. So we'll see how we go. But I've got another amazing guest this week as we've had so many amazing guests over this season. And uh, today's guest is none, none other than Austin Pluscott, all the way from Canvas Church in Florida. How are you doing, Austin? Hey, doing well, man. Glad to be here. So excited to have you. Me and Austin have known each other for a little while now, um, and we are we are good friends. Um, not just you know connected on Instagram, but we talk on on FaceTime and we hang out, and um, we've kind of been building this yeah. you know creative relationship, should we say, for uh, the last few years. And um, yeah, it's it's been really it's been really cool. But a lot of people don't know Austin um, or don't have the privilege of knowing Austin. So maybe Austin, just tell us a little about who you are, um, kind of where you're at right now. And um, yeah, I'd love to know more about you. Yeah, um, kind of a wild story. I I am the creative director here at Canvas Church. We're located in North Florida in a town called Alachua. Uh, It's a city of about 9,000 people, uh, which is wild. And we are a church of uh, over 2,000 people in a city of 9,000 people. And I've been the creative director here for nearly eight years now, which is such a crazy thing to really I uh, try to wrap my head around it. It feels like it's been two years. You know, it's it's crazy to think that. But uh, throughout that time, have experienced a ton of explosive growth and have have really seen the church quadruple in size um, since since my time on staff here. So it's just been continued growth, continued uh, large projects um, that have just have continued to just come in uh, throughout those eight years and the ability to just build a a creative team and a creative community here within our creative department at Canvas Church. And that's super exciting. It's really uh, one of the most rewarding things that I get to do. Um, My hands are really on anything visual that comes out of Canvas Church. So that that ranges from the visual side of production, including lighting, video, uh, any sort of content that we create uh, for any of our live environments, to social media, to the films that we produce, um, to any of the merchandising that we do, any print materials that we do, and then across all of our departments as well, um, along with all of the brand identity work and and continued um, progression of the Canvas Church brand. Uh, I get to have my hands on all of that stuff and get to work with a ton of great creative people in the process. And it's really one of the most rewarding things ever. Uh, We're a regional church in the North Florida area, and we have 72 zip codes that actually attend Canvas Church. And so it's it's a large church in a small town and that really makes us unique um, with, a, with a real regional influence and it's, it really is a, a unique environment to be in. We're 100% non-denominational. We're not connected with any sort of church planning network um, or any sort of denomination of any kind, but we are connected to a ton of great churches that have uh, really helped us along the way and have really um, extended that that uh, that community to us and that has been a blessing. We really do stand on the shoulders of Um, other churches that have connected with us and that we are connected to and that we draw inspiration from and ultimately churches that we call friends. And so um, we, even though we're not a part of a denomination or any sort of network, we are, we are a networking church. We are a church um, that is connected and uh, that's been really, really exciting. And that's been also one of the most rewarding parts of this job is connecting with other creatives and other creative churches in our area and around the country and around the world. And uh, it honestly um, has been such a ride and I'm excited to continue it. We'll see where uh, the years progress from here. And uh, I'm excited and, and thankful and honored to be here today. So thanks for having me, man. It, it really is crazy that a friendship has has grown out of um, 
out of our, you know, just Instagram conversations and that it really has, we, we've, we've found these commonalities between you and I, and, and we really are so, so similar, but we're separated by five time zones and an entire <laughs> ocean. And, uh, it's, it's really crazy that we live in a time where we can maintain a, a true friendship, not just a connection or, or a, uh, you know, a conversation, but we can maintain a friendship, uh, oceans apart and, yeah. and, uh, five hours apart. It's, it really is wild. So I'm thankful for your friendship and I'm thankful for uh, the opportunity to be here today. I'm excited about it. Of course. I mean, Austin plays it down a little bit, but, you know, the impact that Canvas Church has, like he says, is, you know, it's a it's a local church. But it, in terms of the, the look, the branding, the style, I can see the fingerprints of that in terms of inspiration across the country. And uh, a lot of you will know Austin as the, the uh, black and orange man. Um, in fact, <laughs> Austin, I wonder, do you know the hex code of the Canvas Church Orange off by heart? Yeah, yeah, FF6700. <laughs> there you uh, go. That has a... changed a little bit recently. Uh, yeah, has has changed by one one click recently. It used to be, um, yeah, it used to be different, but now it's it's FF6700. So yes, I do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that... I'm, I'm a little embarrassed no, by don't. that. don't but I guess I shouldn't be. <laughs> that shows dedication. But I think the reason I say it is because we've, we've actually featured Austin before on, on multiple things at Pro Church Media. Um, one of them being he launched a course um, and the course was all about branding and who better to, to kind of walk us through that when, when the style and the branding of Canvas Church is so... You see, and that's what a brand is, right? You see not just the logo, but you see the, the yep. visual identity and you know exactly who it is just from a color. Just from knowing a hex code, you can tell something about a, a church. That's really yeah. cool. But um, Austin's going to talk not not kind of about branding today. We're actually going to talk a lot more about community uh, and about fostering creativity within a community. Yeah. And um, Austin kind of let on a little bit there about about you know networking with churches. But we're going to kind of kind of microscope that down a little bit and look more at, at creative teams. And as a creative, even if you're not in a team, how do you build community? So we're talking right. about it before the, before the show started about how uh, you kind of went from the one the one man band to building a team and that are doing some really cool stuff in the church. Um, so maybe just walk mm-hmm. us a little bit through that kind of how you got started in that, um, and then how do you go about building a team, especially when you're starting pretty much from scratch? Yeah, um, it really it really is kind of a, a wild sequence of events. But when I came on staff. Uh, we were a church of about, about 500 people, uh, which is already kind of crazy. At least it was back then for a church of that size to have a full-time creative person, a full-time creative staffer. I think we live in an age now where that's that's not as crazy. We we understand now more how vital that is uh, to the growth of a of a young church and and establishing uh, influence in the community and and really um, you know b- building anticipation and building attraction around uh, the mission and the vision of your church. But back then, um, you know, eight years ago, it it was a bit more uncommon. For a church of that size to to bring somebody on to do creative work full time, and so uh, I came on. We were a staff of about seven people, part time and full time people. Um, and it were it really we we were still portable at the time. We had we were a church a portable church for eight years. Uh, moved across several different venues and did the setup and tear down thing every single week. And I, I was privileged enough to to see that in action for a full year of of my. Uh, of being on staff here. And I was able to experience that and be a part of that and understand uh, really what church plants go through and uh, really understand what it means to plant a church and that it's not all, uh, it's not, it's not all beautiful all the time. There's a lot of pain, you know, that comes with, with growth and a lot of pain that comes with starting anything new, you know, you, there's, there could, because there's so much learning um, that happens in the beginning. There's so many mistakes that, that can tend to happen, you know, in the beginning. And um, I would say it was, it was just plowing, you know, it was just, it was a church that was committed to doing whatever it takes to continue to reach people, even when the circumstances weren't ideal, even when the locations weren't ideal. And uh, I think because, because of that spirit and because that was forged in those moments, you know, in, in those portable years, I think that really has become a, a tenet of, of our, our faith, so to speak, or at least a core value of our culture is that we, we honestly, in so many ways still operate like a church plan. And I say that to say that we're very resourceful and we're committed to making things happen, uh, even when circumstances aren't ideal. And uh, I think that grit, 
comes from those portable years. And so I'm thankful for it. I think it, I think it's really valuable and really important, but, um, yeah, came on staff, uh, really, really small staff in a, in a small office. And, uh, over the years, I just had the opportunity to really understand what it means to lead. And I don't mean lead leading with a title. I mean, leading by example. And I mean, leading by, um, showing up every day and believing it, even if nobody else does showing up every single day and believing that you can continue to get better, that you can learn new things, that your creativity is not fully realized, that it's not fully actualized yet, but that there's something better coming and that you showing up every day helps to make that happen. You reaching the potential that God gave you is on you. God, God gave you your potential, but it's your responsibility to reach that potential. And so over the years, I think a willingness to just get up every day and try to get a little bit better um, has has really helped us so much. And I think that has been instilled in our staff core values as well. But over the years, um, continued to just do two things that I believe have led to uh, the honestly, the creative department that we have now that's made up of, um, depending on what season we're in, anywhere from four to eight creative people, both in-house and outsourced, that are doing amazing creative work in all different disciplines of of creativity from film to print to social media to marketing to email to you know anything that you can think of um, that that is visual. We have incredible creative people that are that are putting their hands on it and they're coming to work every day and they're they're also trying to get a little bit better every day. And I think that that spirit um, is is so important to what we do here at Campus Church. But um, over the years, when it was just me, when it was really lonely, and it still is sometimes, but when it was really lonely, um, I was committed to doing two things. And I think uh, this was a staff value that was taught to us really early on. But uh, those two things were identify and include. Identify and include. And... Uh, what that means is I was really committed early on to identifying people with creative potential, not necessarily creative skills, but creative potential. Uh, Ira Glass said in this really famous piece called the gap that you can look up, but he talks about how the most important thing about a creative person, any creative person who does any creative discipline is taste. And so it was identifying people with taste early on. It was identifying people who, who maybe had the X factor, who maybe had what it took to do this full time or to, to create art for the church and with a purpose that has purpose. And so um, identifying those people early on and then including them in our processes. And so sometimes those were attenders. Those were, those were people who called Canvas home that, that weren't necessarily plugged in, that, that maybe were on the fringe. And sometimes those were just people in the community that were doing great work, that were uh, really talented, created, p- creative people and just fostering relationships with them over time. So identifying those people, number one, finding out who they are, building relationships with them, and then including them in the process. Anytime that they expressed any sort of interest uh, in what we were doing, I said, why don't you come and see for yourself? Why don't you come and be a part of it? Why don't you come and put your hands on it? Even if I can't pay you, uh, just come just come be a part of it. And as the work got better, as the work continued to get better and we, we were sharing more of it and it was, it, was, it was better and better and better every single time. It was really, really was an iterative process as it should be. Um, as the work began to get better, the attraction began to grow and more and more people wanted to get in and wanted to have their hands on projects and wanted to be a part of the process, even when it wasn't paid. Even when I said, I can't pay you for this, but I want you to, I want you to be a part of this team. I want you to, to, to be, to, I want you to have some ownership in this. And I want you uh, to reap the reward of being a part of, of such a purpose filled project. And over time, when you do that enough, you build this natural community of creative people. You build this natural creative web, this network of creative people around you. And, uh, you know, as resources continued to increase, we were able to bring a lot of those people on and bring them in in different ways, whether it was contracting them for projects or bringing them on part-time or bringing them, bringing them on staff full-time. Um, it really has been the most rewarding thing, but it all started with identifying those people either in our community or in our fellowship and then, uh, including them in the creative process. And I would say those two things really have contributed to the growth of not only the church, because I, I really do believe that that goes across every uh, department within our church, but 
especially in the creative department. We have seen exponential growth, not only in our ability, but in number and in the number of people who want to, who, who want to be here, who want to be a part of this thing. And it really is an honor and I don't take it lightly. And I don't take it for granted, but I believe those are the two things that uh, created that, that result. And uh, I'm thankful for it. And we are who we are today because of that. That's huge. The, I think we had a very similar conversation with Ron earlier in the season where it's it's very much not about you know whether they present themselves with the creative image right they're not rocking up with a flat white and a beanie on like that that's not the the qualifications to be a creative but it's actually yeah. like you said it's either the, it's the taste or it's just even having the passion or showing some kind of interest yeah. and it's up to then the leader to develop that and instill that and then like you say to then include and then it becomes a community thing and i think we so often talk about the production side of creativity, particularly within the church. Like, look at this cool thing that we made and look at this, you know, this project that we worked on. But a lot of that comes out of having a positive and constructive community, right? And, you know, I think for creatives across the globe, across churches, one of the best things that you can do for your your church is maybe take a step back from really just thinking about the the production side of things not literal production but the production of creativity and then think about okay well how do i just foster creativity in a in a community what and ron talked about this before is yeah. what what about small groups what about um just hangouts like what about things where you actually just get to know right. people and sharpen each other in an environment there's there's no pressure to create something but there's there's a apart yeah. from relationships so really good points really good thoughts yeah, I wanted to add something to that. I think I think to your point of production, I think anybody can do it once. I think anybody can put together a super group or uh, you know make an investment in creative people in your area or pull, pull together this team um, if you have the resources to do so. Anybody can put out a job listing and and bring in the most talented people in the area. Anybody can do that. If you have the resources to do it, anybody can do it. But if you want to go the distance and if you want to have longevity, it takes culture. It takes constructing like actual culture in and around your team. You can do it for a short amount of time without doing that. But if you really want to do it over a long period of time, if you want to make this a three, four, five, six year project, if you really want to want to create something that lasts and, and, and build a team that, that can go the distance, it takes investment and not just the work that you do, and not just in the people that you have, but in the culture of the team that you've created. It takes it takes an investment um, in that as well. And so, you know, you, we think about the great teams, and and maybe you can speak to a couple of different sports. But but if you think about like the great American football teams, you know, I, I think about the Seattle Seahawks. It just just kind of immediately uh, number one because they're the team that I root for, but number two uh, because they're a team that created. If you especially if you think back, you know, twenty twenty twelve to twenty sixteen, um, there was no team in the NFL with the caliber of culture that that team had had uh, cultivated, and uh, it really it started at the top. It started with the uh, the management, it started with the front office, and it started with their coach Pete Carroll, who was such a, a culture warrior and was was so militant about the culture that they had created. And you could feel the unity, like you could feel this team wants the same thing. Everybody on this team wants the same thing and will do anything to make it happen. They will, they will fall down for each other. They will sacrifice for one another. They will cry with each other. They will fight with each other. They will do whatever it takes to, to come to the same end goal. They will do whatever it takes to win. And that is what healthy team culture looks like. And in the, in, in the creative, in the church world where, um, you know, I, unfortunately we hear about, uh, about, so much toxicity in and around, not just our culture at large, but even in the church world, we hear about these, we hear these stories of toxic culture in and around the church. And we have to know, we have to understand that we can change that. Like you can influence the culture of your team. And it just starts by showing up every day, willing to encourage other people, willing to acknowledge and realize that we're all fighting for the same thing and then being willing to invest in the people on your team. Even if you're not in charge, you don't have to be in charge to lead. 
you have to just set, you have to set the example um, to lead. That's all it takes is, is showing up every day, willing to set the example of what it looks like to lead and what it looks like to embody and carry the culture of your team and of your church. I call it being a culture carrier. Can you show up every day and be a culture carrier? Culture carrier, if you do, and if those on your team are willing to do the same, you will build uh, a culture and a team that is so unified that you can really grow and continue to do things that you never thought you could before. You'll you'll work on projects that you never thought uh, you could. You will take on uh, responsibility that you never thought you could handle, and you'll produce work that's better than anything you ever thought was possible. But it all starts with creating culture and unifying uh, the team that you have, and unify even if they're not paid, even if they're just people who are willing, like we talked about before. Um, culture is so 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 important, and. Uh, community, like like we said, I just wanted to add to that because uh, so much of the time we think in the short term, we think in the immediate. We don't think about longevity. We don't think about um, staying planted. And and there's the old like church phrase that we say a lot, where um, everyone overestimates what God will do in one year, but everyone also uh, underestimates what God can do in ten. So you overestimate what God can do in one year, but you underestimate what God will do in 10. And that's so true. Um, That's so true. And I I can kind of be a testament to that uh, nearly a decade into this thing, that it is true that if you will commit your hands to the plow, if you'll stay planted and you will just commit to being a culture carrier and commit to building other people around you with encouragement and with uh, feedback and with um, real community, God will, God will show up and he will help you build something that you never thought possible. Uh, and that's, that's sort of my testimony um, with our creative team and, and with what we've been able to accomplish here. That's good. There's, there's so many things we can pick through on that just in terms of in wisdom and good thoughts. I think you've kind of summed up really well what it's like to carry culture within a creative team. But what about for creatives that, you know, maybe they are, the, the one man show to start. Maybe they're like not even connected right now to a, to a local church. Yeah. And maybe they just want to be part of a community, you know, like pro church media or want to be part of something wider. Yeah. How do we as creatives support those creatives and how do creatives that are looking for something like that, how do they go like go about kind of getting into that, into that kind of thing? Yeah. I, I pulled up a, a verse here that, that I think we could lead off with. Um, Ecclesiastes, chapter four says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Even if one of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls down and has no one to help them up. And that's so like, that's so practical and that's so real. And it applies to those who don't literally work together as well. It applies to, we, we talk a lot about the capital C church. Well, let's make this new thing. Let's, let's, let's create this new thing. Let's call it capital C, like church creative community. You know, yeah. like, like that's a thing too. Um, because if you think about all of the innovation and growth throughout human history, right? We started with somebody who invented the wheel and then, you know, uh, throughout history, there have been there's been technological advancement after technological advancement. And now we're splitting the atom and we're using stem cells to clone um, things. And we're doing all this crazy stuff. We're making energy from nothing. Like we're, we're, we're doing all this crazy stuff, but I bet the guy who invented the wheel never thought any of that was going to come after that. He was just worried about what he was working on at that moment in time, but we've stood on each other's shoulders throughout history. And we've continued to build on each other's work throughout history to create this thing that we now know. It hasn't been accomplished in one generation. It's been accomplished across hundreds and hundreds and thousands of generations. And that's so important to understand and realize that we stand on each other's shoulders. We have the opportunity to stand on the shoulders of those who went before us and those who are around us. Like we really, really do have the ability and the, the opportunity to help each other get better, to stand on each other's shoulders, to take from each other's work, um, to, to be inspired by one another and help build each other up. And I think that starts with a few things. Uh, and this applies to the church creative who doesn't currently have any community built in around them. Number one, you have to be, you have to be secure enough to understand and realize that you need community and you have to be secure enough to allow yourself to build community. So many 
people are stifled by comparison and are stifled by the, uh, the imposter syndrome that we always talk about. This idea that somebody's going to find out that I don't know how to turn something into outlines on Illustrator or I don't know how to merge layers inside of Photoshop. We're all so freaked out by the fact that someone eventually one day is going to find out that we don't know as much as everyone else thinks that we know, but really we're all the same. We are so much more similar than we are different, especially within this this niche, this, this niche thing of of creativity in and around the church. We are so similar, you guys. Um, even even oceans apart, Ruben and I are are the same person. We, we battle the same, many of the same things. We go through many of the same things. We work on many of the same projects. We, we encounter many of the same problems. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's first understanding and realizing that you have to be secure enough to allow yourself to create community. Um, and then uh, yes, I, I think that's I think that's number one is is really killing the imposter syndrome and and killing the comparison thing and understanding that you do have something to contribute and that others around you do want to create community with you they do want to be in community with you and uh, it's our natural human instinct to be connected with one another and so I think it starts with that um, and then number two is I would say look around you. Number two, look around you. Look at churches in and around your area. Even if there's a church up the road that has a high school kid who's uh, making stuff in PowerPoint for his church, connect with that person. Connect with people around you who are like-minded and who are doing uh, things that are similar to what you're doing. Like like commit to that, reach out to those people, cold call those people and, and begin Start small, begin to build that community uh, one person at a time. And I would say, look around first. Um, but in addition to that, we live in a time where we have uh, all of humanity is at our fingertips because of the internet, because we're connected on a level that we never have been before in human history. We, we have the ability to, to build friendships and relationships and, and real community with one another, even when we're separated by oceans and time zones and thousands of miles. We have the ability to do that now like we never have before. And so I would say, utilize that. I would say, utilize that. Don't, don't be afraid that you're going to send a DM to somebody that you look up to within the church community and that they're just going to, to snub you. It may happen, but you can't be paralyzed by that. It's worth reaching out to. I will tell you that some of the most um, rewarding relationships for me over the years have not been with people who have hundreds of thousands of followers. It's been the person who reaches out with a genuine concern or comes up at a conference with a, with a genuine question or um, sets up a, you know, sets up a phone call just to introduce themselves and say, Hey, I'm nobody. And say, well, you're not nobody. You are somebody, but they reach out and, and ask for, you know, a moment of your time and just to ask some real genuine questions. I would say those have been the most rewarding relationships. It's with, it's with those who, who genuinely desire um, connection and genuinely desire help. And then having the ability to pour into that person and then realizing I have so much to learn from them. Those have been the relationships that have really given so much back to me. And they've resulted in real friendships. They don't just end at, it's not a client, it's not a, you know, a, a client relationship. It truly becomes a friendship. And I'm still connected with so many of those people to this day who come through town and we grab coffee or we grab dinner and we're, we're, we're able to connect on another level that started with a phone call or that started with a direct message on Instagram with a simple question. And uh, I'm thankful for those people who, who had the boldness, um, to either send that message or to respond to my messages when I did that or respond to me when I sent them an email or, or uh, pick up the phone whenever I gave them a, gave them a call. Um, though that, you know, that's, that's real community to me. And that, that's some of the most rewarding stuff, um, that we have as, as both creatives and as followers of Jesus is connecting with one another in community. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's so true. Like what, what we have here is not a replacement for local community. Like you need people around you. But what we also have is, is the, like you said, like the ability to reach out to like-minded individuals across the globe. And you can, you can get so much information and wisdom from people who are going through maybe the similar journey, but they're, they're 10 years down the line, but they're thousands of miles away. There's so many people that I've learned from 
and you know through being on Instagram for various years uh, various number of years like being able to just connect with them when I was you know just my little personal Instagram page just messaging people like Dustin, Dustin Cooper who, I don't know if he's listening but you know Dustin Cooper what a what a legend he is a veteran of the church creative world and I remember like, you know, 2018, 2019, like messaging him and getting a response and like what that does for a creative to be able to build relationships with people that are in some, maybe somewhere you want to be, or maybe they have information that you want to bring back to your local church is huge. And that's what, that's what pro church media has always been about. It's been about inspiring and building community. And um, that's the one, one thing I love about it. And one of the reasons I love being part of the community is because you get to learn um, from from one another and connect with people. I've connected with so many people. This is what this podcast is about: connecting with people in different places and finding out about what what makes them tick and what they've learned over the over the, their their career. And um, so we've been kind of looking at how we refine that and help to just ultimately increase community and decrease noise. And so as as the podcast as the podcast has kind of been letting on over the last few months as the name church circle we've launched something called church circles and uh, church circle is a community for church creatives without the noise so i think it's kind of what facebook groups were like or discord but without algorithms without advertisements and it's a place and a platform solely so you as a church creative can connect with other church creatives so we launched that this week um and i'm so excited about that um and you know, if you're listening now, maybe you're in the future, further down the line, come and join us. We'll be, I'm sure we'll be on there chatting. And um, it's such a great place to connect because I know there's a lot of people out there who don't want Facebook. The only reason they have Facebook is because they're part of Facebook groups that they can talk to people and interact with people. And now, um, as we kind of move, I feel like as society moves further and further away from wanting to be on social media, there is an option for you as the church creator to connect with people without the pressure of having a social profile. So um, we're really excited about it. Go and check it out. It's churchcircles.com. Jump on there, connect to some people. It's free to join and you can um, and kind of just kind of see what it's all about. We'll have um, weekly hangouts on there. There'll be places and, and chats that you can dive in with experts on stuff. So if you want a specific um, we have a specific question about production or video or whatever it may be, you'll be able to get the information there. So we're doing our best here at Pro Church Media to try, to try and connect you without the noise and try and give you the information and the people that you need to help you walk uh, in this creative journey. So hopefully you guys are excited or as excited about that as I am. Like I said, go on to churchcircles.com, go and check it out. And um, we look forward to kind of seeing how this progresses. As I said, this is the first week. Uh, this is the first week of April. And we'll kind of see how this goes. And there'll be iterations as we move forward about how we can make it better. But that's that's the big thing. We're always trying to make the community better. So let us know once you log on what you guys think. And uh, we look forward to kind of building this relationship. Both I will be on there, Austin will be on there, and a lot of the podcast members that have been on over the last few episodes or the future episodes, they'll be on there as well. So if you have questions about the podcast, there'll be a place to talk about that as well. And uh, Austin, I don't know if, if you've got any thoughts on that, but I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, it's kind of like the the old days of the internet where all we had was message boards. You remember the message boards where 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 you would check it, you know, once or twice a day and you'd have these ongoing with with conversations, uh, ongoing conversations with people uh, who had funny usernames and that's that was the early, you know, iteration of of digital community and it feels like we're we're going back to that in a in a, a refined way, in a healthy way that a lot of the toxicity that social media breeds um, is being, like you said, it's being muted uh, in this new environment. And I'm so, so excited about it that we can focus on the things that matter and leave a lot of the other stuff behind. And it's a great alternative to doing that on social media alone. I think it's a healthier alternative and ultimately it's a more focused alternative. And that's the thing that I'm excited about. Like let's Let's keep uh, everything in one place and let's focus on building up one another and having real constructive conversations where we're able to collect inspiration and bounce ideas off one another and share early iterations of our work. That's some of the stuff I'm the most excited about. How many of you work in an environment where you have nobody to show your work to? Who understands? You have people to show your work to. You show your work to your wife or, or your friend or, or some, send it to somebody on Instagram. But, but how many of you work in an environment uh, where, where you don't have anyone to bounce your ideas off of who actually understand and, and realize what it takes to get there? I told this to Ruben earlier when we were talking before the show that uh, I established a long time ago that my 
encouragement and affirmation can't come from uh, the people who work on staff here. It can't come from the people who call Canvas Church home. It can't come from uh, my immediate friends and family alone. All of those things are good, but there's something better about receiving feedback and encouragement and affirmation from somebody who actually understands what it took to create the thing that you created. There's something powerful about receiving feedback from your peers, being encouraged by your peers, receiving um, true affirmation from people who understand what it took to produce something. And I, I, I said this to him earlier, but I said, if, if, if Ruben gave me feedback on a project and my boss gave me feedback on a project, um, Ruben's encouragement and Ruben's feedback is going to mean more to me because he understands what it took to create whatever it is that that I've created. He understands the hours and the intentionality and the amount of analysis that goes into uh, creating something noteworthy. And I'm thankful uh, for people like that in my life. And I believe that this arena, that this online platform, that church circle is going to do exactly that. It's going to provide a place where we can just commit to building each other up and picking each other up and encouraging one another and helping each other get better. And that's the thing that I'm most excited about it. I can't wait. It's going to be so, so good. Yeah. Very excited. And for those of you thinking like, do I have to go online? Like do I have to go into a web browser? Um, we'll also have an app available as well. So you can download the app to your phone and open it just like any other social platform. Uh, but it has no noise. So you can you can have just that one thing on your home screen, whatever you want it to be. You tap on it, open it up, and you'll have your messages there. You'll be able to talk to people. So hopefully this is going to help you guys. I'm really excited about it. I think it will. I think it will reduce the noise. Um, and it's just an exciting time for for us as, as Pro Church Media. And thank you so much, Austin, for joining us. Um, and like we said, he'll be on Church Circles. You guys can connect with him there. But if you want to, if they want to follow you on Instagram or kind of get to know you a bit more, how can they do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to talk to you. I would love to build community with you. I'd love to talk about uh, baseball or uh, music or, or whatever you're into. Like, let's just let's just build a relationship with one another. I'm committed to doing that. I have built time into my weekly schedule purely for that. I had to reevaluate that years ago, uh, and it's something that I treasure now. Is is I've built time into my schedule for investing in others and building relationships with others because I've understood how important that actually is. And so I'd love to meet you. I'd love to talk to you. Um, you can you can send me a message on on social media. My handle is at Austin Pluscott. Uh, you can also find other ways to communicate with me there too. Send me an email. Um, yeah, I, I would love to. I'd love to talk with you. Whether it's whether it's on the phone or, or just send me a DM, but I'd love to build a relationship with you and help you grow any way that I can, even if it's just through friendship. And uh, I'm, I'm committed to that. I understand after all of these years of doing what I do, I understand that more now than ever, how important that actually is. So please reach out. I'd love to, to connect with you. There we go. Well, thank you so much, Austin, for joining us. Um, some great nuggets of wisdom there. Be in community, uh, listener and viewer. Find a place, uh, find local community and find a community with church creatives as well. And you can do that by going to churchcircle.com and uh, finding out more there. But we're back next week with another episode, our sixth episode, as we draw this season to a close. Again, sad music, but we're... Um, very excited for our next guest so thank you so much for joining us Austin thank you guys for listening if you liked this leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or give us a thumbs up or a like or a comment on YouTube this is where this will be as well and share this with someone who may need to hear this because we all need to be in community so thanks again and see you guys soon <laughs>